Did you know that 3,000 Oreo cookies are produced every minute? That means 43 million cookies are produced daily. So you never have to worry, because an Oreo shortage is next to impossible. Oreos have been the world's fastest selling cookies for several years, and they are available in over a hundred countries worldwide. We go behind the scenes to see how Oreo cookies are made, with a surprising bit of information about the company's production method. Oreos are somewhat the holy grail of cookies. Different cookie brands and homemade recipes have tried to replicate the wonder that is Oreo. But no matter how good they taste, nothing beats the real thing. It takes more than the regular baking ingredients like sugar, flour, and chocolate to pull the classic Oreos. For over a hundred years, Oreo has made the best cookies, but not a lot of people know the process involved. From the beginning to the end of the production process, Oreo cookies are completely machine made. This includes the mixing of the dough, all the way to the packaging of the finished product. This comes as no surprise, considering the high demand the company meets up with in such little time and the consistency in their products. It takes only an hour to make an Oreo cookie, but the cookies themselves have a longer lasting impression on the consumer, especially on a bad day. Since the establishment of the Oreo company, the recipe for the cookies has been unchanged. Numerous varieties of these cookies have been introduced over the years, but all variants are made up of 11 constant ingredients. These are sugar, high oleic canola, high fructose corn syrup, cornstarch, soy lecithin, unbleached and rich flour, cocoa, salt, vanillin extract, palm oil, leavening agents such as baking soda or monocalcium phosphate, and of course, chocolate. The first stage of production is making the cookie dough. The dough is made by combining the basic ingredients for the cookies. But first, the factory workers start by pouring tons of sugar into a large container. This container is a part of a huge machine which will whip up the ingredients to form the dough. After emptying several bags of sugar, he adds a combination of two cocoa powders with varying colors and concentrations. This combination contributes significantly to the taste and color of the batter from which the cookies are made. When that's done, a pre-mixed combination of salt, cornstarch, and other dry ingredients, except flour, are added into the mix. Flour is one of the ingredients added last. Up next, the specially formulated high olea canola oil is added into the container holding the other ingredients, and this transforms the combination from the dry mixture to a batter, albeit a watery one. After adding in the oil, water is added as well, and a factory worker sets the machine to begin mixing everything up. This machine has inbuilt whips, which mix up the ingredients as the machine revolves at a set speed. This process happens for a set time, and at the end, the mixture looks like a flowy chocolate soup. Because it was mixed in a machine, the batter that forms are at a temperature higher than room temperature. But before the process is continued, the temperature has to be lowered. The flour is added to the dough at that temperature. The dough will not be as smooth as it should be. Instead, it will be crumbly. Hence, dry ice is added to the batter. Dry ice, which is also frozen carbon dioxide, is used because it evaporates as the temperature of the batter drops, thus ensuring that the concentration of the ingredients is unaltered. Once the dry ice has evaporated, the unbleached enriched flour is added into the batter, tons of it as well as either of the two most used leavening ingredients. This final addition thickens the dough, and the machine goes on one last round of mixing before the cookie dough is ready for the next stage. Next, several workers scoop the dough from the mixing machine onto a grid machine using a shovel. Using the hands would be impractical, considering the amount of dough each person would have to scoop out. If that were the case, there's no way 3,000 Oreos would be produced per minute. As the workers quickly scoop the dough onto the grid machine, other workers press the dough into the machine to give it shape. This grid machine works like a laminating machine. If you've ever watched the lamination process, you'd observe that after the paper wrapped in nylon goes in, it comes out of the other side looking smoother than it did seconds before. With the grid machine, the scattered dough is placed on the end, and as the machine spins, the dough comes out on the other end looking smooth and already cut in the shape and size of regular cookies. The grid machine also has stamps that imprint the Oreo logo on one side of each cookie. This way, thousands of pre-cut cookies are produced every hour, ready to be thrown right into the oven. That takes us to the next production stage, baking. The silicon conveyor attached to the grid machine transports this prepared cookie-shaped dough onto a steel convener. 
This new convener, which is in continuous motion, transports the cookies to a gas oven, where they are baked for a few minutes. The convener's movement allows thousands of cookies to be baked all at once. It also ensures that they are evenly baked because they all have the same oven time and exposure to heat. After baking, the cookies are transported to the location of the next production stage, which is cooling. In the path of the convener, several fans are placed. Each one of these fans rotates at high speed, which accelerates the cooling process. At the end of this stage, the cookies achieve the desired level of hardness, and they are moved to the next station. There, the cookie sandwich is formed. But before then, the cookies have to be placed in the right orientation. And I gotta say, if I was working here, it'd be hard not to snag a few for a quick snack. As the cookies are being transported to the conveners, they are sorted in a way that makes it easy for the packaging after the creamy filling has been added. This filling stage is incredibly fast, since a fast rotating cylindrical pump applies the vanilla filling. The cookies placed upside down are passed under this machine, and after being filled, another machine covers the vanilla filled cookies, with cookies that have the logo imprinted side facing up. After the cookie sandwich is formed, a demarcated convener transports them to where they are sorted and packed. Next, mechanical fingers separate these cookies into groups of 11, and each group is neatly dropped into underlying plastic trays. Afterwards, these trays are moved to the wrapping station, where they're covered with thin aluminum foil. Then, they are mechanically wrapped in the branded packs, sealed and boxed. From there, they are loaded into company trucks, ships, or planes, from where they are transported to retailers all over the world. Since March 1912, the Oreo company has followed this process to make the world's best cookies. However, the level of machinery used by the company has improved over the years. The most popular Oreos variant is the classic cookies, but the company has produced a lot of variants like the Double Stuff Oreo, the Football Oreo, the Golden Oreo, Oreo Mini, the Mo Stuff, and several others. Like with most junk food, most people are skeptical about eating Oreo cookies or are overly mindful about the amount they eat. That's fine, but I bet you didn't know that the Oreo company has made it so that their cookies are healthier than most. First, Oreo cookies are made with purely vegan ingredients. Second, the calorie content of Oreos makes it safe for people who are on a diet. So even when you're trying to lose a few pounds, you can still enjoy a pack of Oreos with a glass of milk, no problem. Which variant of Oreos is your favorite? The classic Oreos are always my go-to. Leave your answers in the comments section below.